Hello, welcome to Electric Focus, and this is part two of an Eevee long journey in very cold weather. So minus five we're starting off with today, and it'll be interesting to see how the battery performs today in this cold weather. Again, yesterday it definitely had an impact. Normally get 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour on average, and we're getting more like 2.1 to 2.3, so quite significantly less than normal. So again, be interesting to see how that goes and also how the charging infrastructure is coping with another 30,000 EVs on the road. So yesterday wasn't too bad. Today, I think it might be a bit busier, but we'll see how it goes. So let's get into the video. So first stop today on this journey and we're at Peterborough Services, just off the A1 and six Ionity 350 kilowatt charges here. So got here and had a little bit of a problem, not with a charger, with the actual charging port for the Jaguar I-Pace because it's so cold that it was frozen. So couldn't get it open, nearly had to rip the thing off. Eventually managed to get it open with some hot water to uh, release it. So luckily that sorted, but it was a bit of a worry. So a bit of delay there, but once that was done, plugged in, little glitch with a charger just had to restart it but it was fine after that and we're now up and running and charging so not perfect start at all by any means but we'll um, hopefully have a bit of a smoother journey for the rest we left this morning with 51 miles and arrived here with 11 so we're going to have to charge for a fair bit up to 80 percent before moving on right we're at the next stop which is good serve just off the A1 Weatherby services and 12 350 kilowatt charges here. So lots to choose from, but when we got here, it was uh, chock-a-block. They were all taken up. Uh, there was one free. And when we went up to use it, plugged in, the contact list didn't work. Tried a few times and in the end had to phone good serve, which took around, I think about five, five or six minutes to get through eventually to speak to somebody and then they had to reset the charger, tried again with contactless, still didn't work. So the only uh, benefit is that they started it remotely and now we're getting a free charge. So that's good, but a bit of a faff waiting around. And in that time as well, somebody had left one of the other bays and then another car got in ahead of us. So that's um, a bit frustrating. But anyway, we had that experience, wasn't great. The journey itself up to this point, was uh, it was a bit warmer than it was before so just over freezing and we were getting about 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour for that part of the journey so a bit better there than it has been even though it's still pretty cold so not bad in terms of that and in terms of charging now getting speeds of around 70 kilowatts so not bad for the state of charge on right now so glad to be charging wasted a bit of time but uh, We'll be off soon and on to the next part of the journey. Speak to you soon. Right, we've reached our last destination, good old Gretna. And when we got here, the Ionity chargers were all taken up. No surprise, that seems to be common at the moment. And there was also a car waiting. So already had a look on ZapMap to see if the grid serve 60 kilowatts were free. And it was shown that one of them was free. It wasn't clear on ZapMap. It looked like I said it was out of order. So came straight round anyway, and there was one free and it was working. So plugged in, fine, it's charging. So we're charging, which is good. So although those are faster over there, the 350 kilowatts, with 100 kilowatt maximum, the Jaguar I-Pace takes, and this, this is a 60 kilowatt, it's still pretty quick for the car. So it's just as good to get onto this one and start charging rather than wait over there. So this is our last stop and then we'll be on our way home so no more charging to do after that and what's my reflection then on the whole experience today well first of all started off really cold and that was just to get to our first destination which was peterborough services the ionity charges 350 kilowatts and when we got there we had a problem with the bad design of the jaguar i-pace charging port couldn't get the flap open and had to find a solution to get that sorted which took a few minutes but by the time we'd sorted that we'd lost a bit of time got charged though got back on the road and then headed up to our next charging destination which was 
at the Weatherby services just off the A1. And when we got there, it was really, really busy. That services is just chocker at the moment. And there were cars coming in all the time behind us. There was one bay available. We went into that bay and you know, it looked like it was great because we've got a space, but it turned out that the payment terminal wasn't working. However, a bit of patience, got on the phone, took a bit of a while to get through. It was about six minutes. It seems forever when you're waiting, doesn't it? But got through to customer service. They reset the charger, which took about another five minutes. And by the time all that faffing around, it was probably about 15 minutes lost there. So a little bit of time lost there but um, at least we got a charge and then could get on our way. And while we were there, there were cars coming in all the time to that services. So cars going in and cars coming out as well. Another thing I did notice when I walked along, just looking at people's state of charge, there was a car there that was on 100%. So it does beg the question, you know, that there's a car there fully charged, taking up that space that uh, you know, really need to be moving on. And, you know, why charge to 100%? Because that last... 20% of charge is so slow that you might as well move on to your next destination. However, you know, everybody to themselves, you know, there might be a reason, might have plenty of time there, need that 100% charge to get home. So it's a, debatable, it's a debatable one. What I have noticed recently in rugby services, for example, is that they seem to be stopping the chargers at 80%. I've never seen that before, but it automatically stopped at 80% both times I was there recently. So it looks like Grid Server put something in there to make that happen. Uh, so, you know, interesting one. Perhaps you want to make some comments on that. But um, that was the experience there. Anyway, got back on the road. So lost a bit of time. But the rest of the journey has been fine. And now eventually got to this destination. And that whole journey was pretty consistent in terms of the kilowatts sorry the miles per kilowatt hour so it was 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour for that last part of the journey so overall the weather does have an impact definitely particularly when it's really cold but it wasn't too bad on the second part of the journey when it starts to warm up a bit and that's the battery warming up as well so that's my reflection and now we're close to getting charged so as always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll speak to you soon.